spiritual guide and our very own Shivani Didi. Her very name brings smile to the faces of everyone who has led, uh, uh, had the opportunity to interact and learn with her. With the huge following of people, she has been an important part of Brahm Kumari movement, emphasizing the significance of soul and the importance of spiritual health to human life. I have had the privilege of attending her Murli classes and the special talks she has conducted for us doctors at Gangaram Hospital and uh, even at Mount Abu. And uh, she really propagates the practice of holistic healing and her ideas and knowledge have inspired all do us doctors help heal our patients in a very affirmative way. Didi is involved in several health initiatives ranging from promotion of organ donation to parenting programs. She has also been a goodwill ambassador to the World Psychiatric Association. Didi, I welcome you to this webinar and request you to share your views on spiritual aspect of health. Om Shanti, Didi. Om Shanti. Thank you so much. Thank you. Om Shanti. The last one and a half year, Google says, that the word which was searched most often on the net was immunity. So we were all looking at how to build up our immunity system. But when we hear the word immunity or when we search the word immunity or when we think of COVID, the attention is only on the health of the body. And we learned our ways to build up immunity. We also learned our ways to protect ourselves from the virus. But along with the physical immunity, a very deep impact on the body is also of the emotional immunity system. Because we all know that every thought we create, the feelings we create, they are energy, they are vibrations. They even radiate to people around us. And all of us say, I can feel the vibes of that person. I can feel the vibes of that place. So when we can feel the vibes of other people, other people can feel our vibes. So what about our body? Our body is the first one who gets all our vibrations. So right here in the center of the brain is the energy, which we call the soul, which creates every thought and feeling. And every thought and feeling is radiating to the body. If I'm aware of this, that my every thought is not just stuck inside here, but it's also influencing the health of the body. I think most of our wrong thoughts would get deleted that day itself. Because often we are thinking about other people, what they should have done right, why they shouldn't have done it this way, how could they do this way, I cannot forgive them, I cannot forget this, I get angry, I get irritated. It's good to advise people, give your opinion, be strict, be a disciplinarian, get the work done, but take care of the thoughts and feelings because they are affecting our health, not their health. So they might make a mistake. But my thoughts and feelings will affect my health. And that's why doctors tell us that many of the diseases are lifestyle diseases. When we hear the word lifestyle disease, we say, okay, what I eat, what I drink, and I exercise. But lifestyle is not just that. Life means the energy here. When this life leaves, this is a dead body. So life is here. So lifestyle is about how we think, how we speak how we behave, how we work, how we earn our money. That is all lifestyle. Lifestyle is not just eating, drinking, exercising. Because often we find many of us saying, I'm a strict vegetarian, I never drink, I never smoke, I exercise. Why do I have this ailment? Because that's not, that's just one part of lifestyle. So how we think and feel, the emotions we create, the emotions we hold on to. We hold on to a lot of emotions. And they create a blockage here. So that's an energy blockage that gets created here. This energy blockage, after a period of few years, manifests into a blockage in the body, which could be either an ache and a pain, or it can be a clot, more, it can be a tumor, it can be a blockage in the heart. All these blockages from here, they manifest as blockages in the body. So while we're taking care of our immunity and while we are protecting ourselves, we are not sure what the next few months have in store. Doctors and administrators say, we might be looking forward to another third wave. Let's not create fear. 
let's only prepare ourselves because if we prepare ourselves mind and body both we protect ourselves mind and body both then we protect everyone around us mind and body both just remember it's mind and body both it's not just body so then we are going to be very strong not just as a family but as a country and then covid if it has to come it will just come and it will go and it cannot affect us like what has happened a couple of months back so it was not just creating the panic when it happened but to learn the lesson from there to learn what we have to do now so that we do not repeat what has happened before we have lost many many people this year so let's be careful it's not the time to be careless this time every individual who left was someone's child someone's parent someone's spouse many young kids are today without parents is this the time to be careless and say oh everything is back to normal and so we can holiday and we can do everything that we want without protecting ourselves but now we're going to protect ourselves mind and body both one simple e- equation that we need to be very clear every thought and feeling we create is our creation it's not because of situations and people so the first thing is to stop blaming the world for how we are feeling if i keep blaming situations and people for how i feeling then i give myself the permission to create a lot of negative feelings whether this one is not right that one is not right covid is not right so i allow myself to create fear anxiety anger stress situation is outside it's the outer world the inner world of intentions memories thoughts and feelings is our creation so first thing is to take personal responsibility of everything that's created in the inner world that's ours someone outside can make a mistake cheat lie betray they can do the worst but they can do it outside but they cannot get into my mind and create my hurt or hatred or aggression so i am responsible second since i am responsible for what i am creating let me create only the healthy emotions because they're going to decide my emotional health my mental health my physical health my relationships also my professional health everything gets created from here we're living in a world which says stress is normal anger is normal fear worry criticism come all negative uncomfortable emotions we've called them normal none of these are normal they are actually an emotional disease the word dis ease means when we shift from our position of ease it is dis ease so right now i'm calm i'm stable and someone walks into my room and says something and i react i've shifted from my position of ease so i shift to disease so all these emotions are a disease and when we create that dis ease here it radiates that energy to the body and manifests a dis ease in my body because when the energy shifts here it also shifts in my body and after a few years it creates what we actually call a disease that's a disease this is a dis ease so all these are uncomfortable emotional disease what is emotional health compassion acceptance gratitude appreciation cooperation not competition caring sharing kindness serving seva karo jitna hum seva karte hain the energy that we radiate to people creates a very beautiful flow of energy through our system through our mind and body even during the first wave of covid we had done a little program about seva and a lot of people sent in their videos even children doing seva like making tea for the bhaiya at the gate in their colony the little little little, little things and what everybody says was itni khushi to mujhe kabhi bhi nahi hui jitni ye seva karke hui hai we understand that reality that itni khushi kabhi nahi hui jitni seva karke hui hai but we lived all our life thinking khushi milti hai by achieving and acquiring and buying and earning that's just a part of life to look after our physical needs khushi is not in that khushi is in serving the world so these are all our natural emotions so we are the creator and we choose the healthy ones and we take care of simple lifestyle habits lifestyle which can build up my emotional health first and foremost is our sleep cycle sleep cycle 30 years back when we were in school we were taught early to bed early to rise makes a person healthy wealthy wise today children are not using this line anymore and they believe they can study better late at night 
and because one does it 10 do it and now almost everyone is doing it and now they say this is normal so calling something which is unhealthy as normal is a very big mistake because then if you're not doing it then people say oh you're not normal you don't study in the night so the child feels as if there's something wrong with them and they will start studying in the night. Yes, there is silence in the house. There's no distraction. You're studying in the night. So you feel it gets better. But you are going against nature. You're going against the right energizing time. There are a lot of people whose profession, whose career demands them to be awake at night. But they know it starts taking a toll of them over a period of time. But we are students. We are studying. We have no compulsion that we should be doing it at night. So this is the time to build your emotional and physical health. A simple thing like right sleep cycle. Because otherwise, yes, you will study very hard, you excel. But what's the point if we are talking about anxiety and panic attack before the exam? What's the point if we're taking anti-anxiety medication before a board exam? What is the point if at student life we're talking about depression? We had never heard of these words when we were in school. It was like some elderly once in somewhere gets depression. Otherwise, we didn't know anybody who would getting depression around us. So this is not success. This is not success that I am an achiever, but I'm also talking about all these kind of emotions. So one very big reason is not sleeping correctly. So the best time to sleep is 10 to 2, which means these four hours, we should definitely be asleep. So if you want to study, you sleep and then wake up early and start studying. Today, the West is teaching us that it's the 5 a.m. leadership club. They are conducting workshops for us that how we should wake up at 5 a.m. because that is a high creativity, high intuition power time. In Bharat, we know it for thousands of years. It's called Brahma Mahurat. It's called Amrit Vela. So Brahma Mahurat means the highest vibration time. If we study or we contemplate what we want to do during the day, at that time, we will get brilliant ideas because our intuition wakes up at that time. So sleep early and wake up early will not make you just emotionally fit, but also physically healthy. And of course, in whatever we are doing, we perform better. So 10 o'clock, we definitely should go to sleep. And for that, we have a light dinner and an early dinner. So every doctor tells you, eat at least three hours before you sleep. But do we listen to them? Why should we eat three hours before we sleep? So that during our sleep, our body is only doing healing, not digestion. If our body comes doing digestion during sleep, then we need to sleep longer. So now every doctor says, sleep eight hours. Someone says, sleep nine hours. Who sleeps so many hours out of 24 hours? We don't need to sleep so many hours, but they are telling us to sleep so many hours because of our wrong lifestyle. Otherwise, ask your parents and grandparents. Nobody slept more than five, six hours when they were leading a healthy lifestyle. So seven o'clock, early dinner, lighter dinner, which gets digested very easily before your 9, 30, 10. So that when you go to sleep at 10, body is doing only healing, only healing, no digestion. One is for the body, second is for the mind. If you're working, disconnect from work at least one and a half to two hours before you go to sleep. Not that till we're sleeping, we're checking our emails, we're checking our messages, because then we are stimulating the mind. The mind, we're giving it work to do. And then we go to sleep, the body sleeps. The mind has so much to think about. So much to think about, because we were giving it information till we went off to sleep. So at least one hour before you sleep, disconnect from work communication. We'll take it up tomorrow morning. We'll take the same thing up tomorrow morning, but we need to give ourselves good sleep. Then one hour before you sleep, disconnect from all other content, which means not world news before we're going to go to sleep. No media, television, serials, digital platforms, scrolling through social media handles before we go to sleep, which means no giving content to the mind which is not pure, which is turbulent, which is stimulating for the mind, which will take my mind into the beta plus stage, whereas I was supposed to take my mind into the slowing down alpha stage. So if we do this disconnect for an hour before we sleep, then when we go to sleep, the mind goes into the delta deep sleep very fast. Otherwise, we could be sleeping eight hours, but the mind would not have slept much. Simple sign when you wake up in the morning. Are you able to wake up without an alarm? 
you do? So do you wake up natural, healing complete, energizing done? Once the alarm goes off, do you feel like sleeping a little more? That means we've not slept well. And third thing, do you find yourself dozing off any time of the day on a flight, in a train or a bus? So if you, you can fall off to sleep any time of the day, then we are sleep deprived. Then we are sleep deprived in spite of sleeping enough, only because too much content going into the mind before we go to sleep. So this was not there 30 years back. So automatically people slept well. People slept well. They got healed better. 30, 40 years back, we had less treatment modalities, but health was better. Health was better. Today we have children, kids, everybody. We're all talking of all our illnesses. So we are only able to manage them because of the treatment that we have. But we can't call ourselves a healthy society. And we definitely did not have too many mental health issues. Today we're talking about child psychiatry. So we're talking about mental health issues in children. Simple lifestyle things. So content consumption has a very important role to play on our health. Content consumption. Because what we watch, what we read, what we listen is who we become. It's emotional diet. What we watch, what we read, what we listen is the quality of my mind. And as is the mind is the quality of my body. So if I'm consuming content which has ego, which has lust, which has greed, jealousy, criticism, violence, pulling people down, then this is who I will start becoming. This is who I will start becoming. And then my body is going to receive those energies throughout the day and especially during the night when I'm sleeping. Every news channel says their highest TRP is early morning and late night. And these are the two times when we should have not been watching the world news. Mm -hmm. Early morning and late night. Because this is the time that it goes deep into the subconscious, whatever we consume. Whatever we consume. So these two times we need to be careful. First hour of the morning, and last hour before we go to sleep. These two times deep impact on emotional, mental, physical health because subconscious is going to get activated during sleep and all that content is going to go inside. That's why when we say, I cannot forgive them, I'm not able to forget what happened because we did not clean it before going to sleep that night. So it's gone deep inside. So 10 minutes, 15 minutes before you go to sleep, my time. Keep it as my time. 20 minutes before you sleep, five minutes, a daily diary, a daily diary or a daily journal, not about what happened during the day that we know. It's about releasing my uncomfortable emotions of the day. I need to clean them before I go to sleep. So if I created jealousy for someone, I change that thought and say, I'm happy they did well. They have worked hard. They cannot get it otherwise. During the day, I would have thought, how is it that they got it? and I did not get it. If I was angry with anyone during the day, I write sorry to them. Best would be to write it to them, but if we can't write it to them, at least we write it into our diary. I say sorry to them. For those who have not behaved well with me, I forgive them in my diary. So the diary is not about what happened during the day. The diary is about all these emotions which need to be changed before I go to sleep. If I criticized or complained about someone, I need to write it there. Yes, this was not right, but they have a lot of beautiful qualities. This thing about them is very nice. So I'm changing my coding before going to sleep. So criticism, I change to qualities. Complaining, I change to gratitude. Jealousy, I change to self-respect before going to sleep every day. Takes only five minutes, less than five minutes. This becomes your personal cleansing time of the mind. At least 10 minutes before going to sleep, consume a healthy emotional diet which means watch, read, or listen, something which is very pure and powerful. This is where spirituality plays a very important role because spiritual content, content which has divinity, gratitude, compassion, acceptance, cooperation, kindness. So when we consume content of that quality before we go to sleep, then that's what's going to work here and that's what's going to radiate to the body during our sleep. So sleep is yoga nidra, which means even during sleep, it's a meditation. It's a healing that's going to happen. Now, opposite to that, if you consume any serial in which homes are breaking or world news where we know what all is happening, and then you go to sleep, 
then that's the quality which is radiating to your body. And that's not healing energy. That is not healing energy. So content playing a very, very important role on our health. So take care of just before going to sleep. Second, first thought when we wake up in the morning. Start your morning with gratitude. Gratitude to God. Gratitude to your mind and body for being healthy. Gratitude to all the people in your life. Gratitude to the work you do. And fifth, gratitude to nature, Prakriti, which sustains us. So begin your morning with gratitude because gratitude is high vibrational thoughts. And this will help you to be in harmony with everyone during the day, not complaining about everything. Ye thik nahi hai, ye thik nahi hai, ye thik nahi hai. Never use the word, I'm very busy, I don't have time. It's not a healthy thought. It's not a healthy thought. It makes us go against time. It's like saying, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. Which means time and me, we don't get along because I never have time. So we change it to, I'm easy. I have a lot of time. Busy and easy is only an attitude. It's not really about the amount of hours we have. It's our attitude in life. Someone could be working hours and hours. We have Dr. Kiran Bedi with us. I don't know whether she gets to sleep every night, but she is always working. But you see her face, there will not be a vibration of being entangled and busy. And someone can be retired at home, but they're very busy. There's no one busier than them. So it's only an attitude. It's not about the number of hours we work. So always change your thoughts to a high vibrational word. I'm easy. I have a lot of time. I have a lot of time. Not little, little kids saying, I'm very busy, mom, I don't have time. The word is an energy. The word is an energy. And now choose only those words which have healing energy, which have healing energy. Because when I say it here, it's reaching my body. It's reaching my body. So that's why in Bharat, we have so much importance laid on the vocabulary we use. Vocabulary, even names. Why are names always given with a meaning? with a very high energy word, because that name is going to be repeated many times for us. We are going to say it many times. People are going to say it many times. And every time somebody says it, it's an energy which will go through my mind and body both. So like our name, our every word, our language, our vocabulary should be high energy words. Many of us nowadays use abusive vocabulary. And we say, oh, this is cool. This is normal. Please remember, it's an energy which creates disease because it's very low toxic vocabulary. Low toxic vocabulary. This all is lifestyle. So how we think, how we speak. So five thoughts of gratitude every morning. Then we meditate. So it's good to learn meditation. Very powerful tool for our immunity system. Then again, at least 20 minutes of consuming healthy content first thing in the morning. This will be mandatory now if we want to take care of our mind because how much ever we protect ourselves, we are consuming a lot of toxic information throughout the day. So at least 20 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes before going to sleep, consume pure content. Pure content, spiritual study, a self-transformational book, a video, or, but at least 20 minutes in the morning, let it go inside because what will go in is who I become. So content is equal to personality, is equal to destiny. Destiny of the individual, destiny of the country, and destiny of the world. And we can see all this changing. The way content is increasing, a lot of destinies are changing. Take care of content and content that your children consume. Children consume content. At least we are a generation who started consuming all this content after the age of 20, 25. What is going to happen for the children who are consuming this content from the age of two and three? Watching cartoon films which are violent, even if they're sweet, violent in their own way, but they are violent. They are being taught when someone hits someone, I get marks, I get points, I win. It's creating a belief system. It's creating a belief system. If they had to watch cartoons, it had to be taught, if I help someone, I get marks, I win. If I'm kind to someone, I get marks. So it's creating a personality. So content is equal to personality, is equal to destiny. So 20 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes before going to sleep, a healthy emotional diet. During the day, restrict content consumption. 
just this scrolling on the phone, surfing on the net, channel changing, it's not a time pass. It's not entertainment. It's toxic diet. It's toxic diet. And the last is the food we eat. Plant-based diet. Let's experiment with a plant-based diet. Animal in a slaughterhouse. What's the energy? It's the energy of pain. It's the energy of fear, anger, hatred, and then violence, and then death. Energy of death cannot give energy of health to another person. It can give proteins and B12, D3 vitamins, but it cannot give health because it's energy of death. It's acidic for the body. It's difficult to digest. So it does not create an alkaline environment in the body. So immunity system will get affected, but it's also toxic for the mind. Jaisa an, vaisa man hota hai. Jaisa pani, vaisi vani hoti hai. So food and water is not just nutrients, it's vibrations, it's energy. So plant-based diet, home-cooked food. Very important, home-cooked food. When we buy food, it's cooked with the intention of money. So there's an energy of money into the food. So either we eat prashad, which has energy of divinity in it, remembrance of God. Home-cooked food, energy of love and blessings for the family. Ordered and bought food, energy of profit and loss in it, money. So eat home-cooked food, it's energizing. It's energizing. Not sitting at home and ordering food. From where to where we are going. We're sitting at home and we are ordering food. And parents also feel, okay, as long as my child has eaten. It's not about as long as my child has eaten. It's about what they have eaten. And what is not carbohydrates, minerals, proteins, what is what was the energy of the food that was given to them? One, the intention is money. Second, we don't know who's cooking it. We have no idea who's cooking it. So if someone has cooked it in worry, in pain, in anger, we are consuming the vibration through the food. So through the food, we can consume emotions of the person who's cooked it. So the person cooking for you needs to be in a very calm and peaceful state of mind for mental and physical health. In your kitchen, have high energy words playing throughout the day. Bhajan, mantra, prayers, hymns, high energy words in the kitchen throughout the day, just like they are done in a temple or in a Gurdwara. Same way should be done in every kitchen, in every house. The water, vegetables, fruits, everything will get energized. Right now, the water of the city also has fear and anxiety because it's in the air. Water absorbs the vibration, energize the water. So have high energy words playing in the kitchen. Just before you eat, make it a culture in the house. No screens while eating. No food, no TV while eating. Distracted eating, not healthy. Not healthy. We see nowadays in many houses, for little, little children on the dining table, they put the stand with the screen. I think the plate comes afterwards. First comes the stand for the, for the mobile there. And the parent is saying, but what do I do? They don't eat without watching. Then don't give them to eat. Simple. How many days they will not eat? But if you're going to give them screens to eat from this age, they're going to practice distracted eating forever. Forever. So just because we don't have the patience to feed the child with stories and, you know, lovely anecdotes and running after the child, we say, this is easy. Put the screen on the table. The child will eat whatever is given. Distracted eating. If a child from the age of two and three is going to practice distracted eating, we cannot even imagine right now the impact of that on the mind and body 20 years from today. It will be something we will not be able to undo at that age. So never distracted eating for any age. And just before you eat, pause for five seconds. Connect to the divine. Radiate high energy words into your food and water so that you've cleansed the energy of what has come. If someone while cooking was worried, angry, you have to clean the energy. So connect to the divine and radiate high energy words into your every meal, into your every glass of water, every glass of water. So what we watch, read, listen, eat, drink. If these five things are coming in with a high vibration, then we don't have to do much to take care of our thoughts and feelings. It happens on its own. And of course, we take care of our body. So emotional, mental, social health. 
all in harmony with each other. Thank you so much. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Sister, thank you very much today for such a wonderful talk. You know, each word of yours is like, you know, pure gold, I would say. Because it gives you that energizing thoughts and that is so important for us. And every day, I, you know, I learn so many new things from you. And every day is a new day for me because I also feel that uh, learning should never end. And every day we should learn more and more things. I think I've already started practicing with my grandson that we made it a point, never allow him to, he's just yeah. under two now. We never allow him to see a TV. We run around him. Right. Yes. The grandmother, my, the grandfather, yeah. the mother, you know, maid who's there has to run around, yes. but not feed directly Absolutely. in front of a laptop or a screen. Yeah. It's very important that, you know, you, you listen to these children at this age. Otherwise, you'll never learn. One thing more I wanted to add, sister, which is something which we learned uh, through our medical practice of acupuncture, was although we are both allopaths, but we shifted to acupuncture about 38 years ago. And now we do only practice of acupuncture, is that there's something called as an organ clock. This is a very traditional system, which has been followed for so many years. And this is taught in the acupuncture theory wherein we say that these 24 hours are divided into 12 organs. So each organ has got two hours of peak energy flow. Mm. So say, for example, the peak energy flow for the lung channel is between 3 to 5 a.m. And when, they, when the modern medical doctors, who are our students also now, when they started uh, actually doing some studies at the hospital in the emergency room, they realized that the maximum number of acute asthma attacks occur between 3 to 5 a.m. So everything has got a meaning, which means that the traditional methods which were being taught to 3,000 years old sciences, they also realize the importance of these meridians and these organ, uh, thing, clock. organ clock. Same way, you know, uh, the small intest the large intestine is the best time is 5 to 7 a.m. That is why they say for us to yes. have a bowel movement should be between 5 to 7 a.m. And I get a lot of patients who would come to us saying that we have very late bowel movements. They have an irritable bowel. They are going to continue till 12 noon before they clear up. And the reason is simple, because they've eaten wrong time. You're very right. That eating time is also very important. Nowadays, it's become a tradition with youngsters eating till 2 a.m., 1 a.m., and then sleeping. Because the organs are not getting the rest. And that is very logical, because the liver is between 1 to 3 a.m., so all the organs, they require rest. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think even the Jainism, we used to see that people uh, who follow the Jain culture, they say sun, between sunset and sunrise only you should eat. After that, you should not eat. The logic was this only. Opposite, because, between sunrise and sunset. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So they said because after uh, the sunset, the organs want to sleep. They should be rested. And here we are activating them, making them to work more. So I think... So much, so much logic in every of these traditional systems. Even also. the sleep cycle you told, sister, about regarding 10 a.m., 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. fits very well into the wood element of our uh, uh, five elements of our body, which is made up of wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. So we always say that whenever the whenever it is wood time, you should be sleeping. The wood element in the body should get the maximum rest. So that's the liver and gallbladder time. So we get these gallbladder colics at 12 a.m. in people who are not following this natural organ clock. So if you're not, uh, you know, really resting between these, in these four hours, you get a lot of uh, digestive problems, liver problems, gallbladder problems. So it rightly fits into that also, sister. Thank you so much, sister, for giving us such a great uh, information, the entire encyclopedia of information regarding how to take care of our health in a very spiritual manner and also uh, take care of our physical body, you know, uh, learning how the spirit, spiritual health can, you know, really make our body strong and healthy. Thank you, sister. Thank you very Om much. Shanti, sister. Om Shanti. Now I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. Kiran Bedi. Uh, she is known to everybody again. She is again <laughs> a very famous figure in India. She is uh, an Indian politician also now. She's a social activist. She retired as a police officer and a tennis player. She was the 24th Lieutenant Governor of Pondicherry from 2016 to 2021. I had the great opportunity, me and Sunita, of visiting her in Pondicherry. 
and uh, she organized a talk for us also at uh, at uh, in Pondicherry for the medical doctors to raise awareness about acupuncture. She is the first Indian female uh, uh, to become an officer in the Indian Police Service, and she started her service in 1972. She remained in service for 35 years before she took voluntary retirement in 2007 as DG Police. Uh, Bureau of uh, Police Research and Development. In 1979, she was awarded the uh, President's Police Medal for Gallantry and the famous Ramson Max Award in 1994. She did major reforms, and everyone knows her for that, in the Tihar jail for the prisoners during her tenure as IG to Delhi prisons. And presently, she runs a very famous NGO, the Navjyoti India Foundation, for the upliftment of the underprivileged sections of society. Uh, I would request uh, Kiranji now to talk to us about uh, the holistic approach to health. Thank you so much, Dr. Saab, both of you, Sunita and you, for bringing about such a beautiful session and bringing Sister Shivani back to listen. One gets to hear her and learn every moment of listening. And she helps us rewind our thoughts and reflect on our own selves how we are living our lives. But doctor, my best introduction from you would be, Dr. Kiran Bedi is my patient. <laughs> <laughs> and how quickly you heal me. How quickly you healed me. And that's our connectivity. Um, and that's what keeps bringing us together, both you and Dr. Sunita, both of you. You're a wonderful family. That's why when your poster came without Sunita, I returned it. I said, where is Sunita? <laughs> See, because you are not complete without her and she without you. You're a great team. May your tribe increase. Thank you are wonderful. And I know when, when I was a patient, if for what? For losing my voice. Sister Shivani, when I was um, compelled to fight an election, though that was not my DNA, and I was suggested fight an election because we need you for a particular reason. I put myself into saying this is for me patri being patriotic. If it's for my good for my Delhi, okay, Delhi's given me so much. Why can't I put myself at stake? And I'm so glad that I quickly got out of it because that was not my DNA. My DNA is service through administration, not service through vote collecting and giving and asking because I'm not an asker. I'm, I'm, I'm by nature a server because I'm in service. So friends, thank you. But though, though, of course, vote giving and taking is also service. It's the way one looks at it. But doctor, that my mm -hmm. best introduction is though how quickly you healed me. You brought me back. And you know, when you were election campaigning, if you can't communicate, then you better be home. So I lost my voice and you brought it back in two, three days before they were writing me off. And uh, so therefore that's my clear. But the manner in which you treated me, and the manner in which you treat your patients, I think it's an example and a lesson for students to uh, pick up. So, doctor, that's my real introduction as far as you're concerned. What Sister Shivani said is every word is a quotable quote. So uh, we do hope that um, when you wrap up this program and you document this, you will bring in a lot of shots of what she said put them in the YouTube so that people can pick up the small uh, uh, YouTube shots and, of course, the whole session. Yes, These Definitely. are my two opening remarks, Dr. And um, third is, let me share with you uh, two, three things. Dr. Shivani is saying what has made me understand myself. See, she is an absolute spiritual expert. She's Her whole life is the study of uh, spirituality and human mind and how it responds. I've been acting without knowing why am I acting? I'm serving without exactly knowing why am I doing it? Because the why comes with a lot of understanding, reflection and time, but with experience you get to know. But I want to tell Sister Shivani that you're giving me answers to the lot of my whys. And I want to begin with my uh, morning nutrition. As Lieutenant Governor Puducherry, when I took over Sister, I uh, had no experience of administration of civil and civic administration. I was administered, administering policing departments across, but I hadn't run a civil administration, which had all services together, 
which also had the politicians of the highest uh, position together. So what do I do? How do I? And it also revolved, involved a lot of energy, bringing people together. Also trusteeship that I'm now in, uh, responsible for about a population of nearly 80 to 20 lakhs who are looking up to the Lieutenant Governor's office for leadership, uh, for, for accountability. I want to tell you what I did. I used to get up at about 4.30 in the morning, which I wasn't doing earlier. I was getting up at 5, 5.30 when I was a tennis player because I had to go jogging and practice, but not otherwise. So sister, what you're telling me is now I'm, I'm understanding the why. Today, today is that when I was getting up at 4.30 in the morning, I was seeking guidance. I was wanting energy and I was praying for guidance and energy. God guide me because I've been given an interest in the responsibility of a territory, of a union territory. And the prime minister of India has put so much faith in me. How do I deliver? Where is my energy? How do I get it? Uh, no doubt that as a sports girl, I was having a lot of stamina and energy because I was into right food, right timetables, etc. because I could not be a tennis player without that. But this was a different ball game. So at 4.30 in the morning, I sat and meditated. And I was not a meditator prior to that. So I meditated. Sister, I saw revelations. I'm giving practical experience. I'm taking over from what you said is so practical. I'm proving what you write, right? Without knowing that what I was doing is exactly what you say. So at 4.30, something spoke to me. I was getting guided. I was getting an inner voice. And I was, of course, um, feeling very fresh and energized. But I was also getting guided. So it's not that it has blank meditation. I was getting an inner voice to say, what should you do today? I'm getting goosebumps telling you this. Every day, the situation was speaking to my, me. And I got the messaging. And my challenge was, how do I get these thousands of public servants together into one kind of common culture, which is spiritual service, where they're feeling accountable and feeling um, involved, feeling committed, conscientious. How do I create a work culture? And I did not know anybody, sister, that was a Tamil uh, speaking place. And they did not know Hindi, most of them. And English, obviously, very little knew. I did not know Tamil. How do I communicate with them? But I'm here to serve them. How much they know I'm here for them, not for myself. So sister, morning gave me energy by getting up that early. And secondly is I was being guided. And I got the solutions. Today, do this. This is what you. This is what is helpful to you. I got ideas. I got guidance. I got uh, uh, the, um, the keys. What do I begin with? So I started with the morning nutrition, which I tweet every morning, called the morning nutrition, which I used to do earlier before I became the LG. But uh, now I started to pick up a service-oriented good thought. Now I'm leading to early morning, but I'm proving you right. Secondly is the thought. I was seeking guidance, and I got a morning nutrition thought. And then I created a WhatsApp group called Prosperous Puducherry which brought all the key public leadership, uh, public servants together. And the morning nutrition went to them, which was nutrition to me. First, I was nutritioning myself with positivity. And then I couldn't keep it to myself. I put it in the WhatsApp group of nearly 230 key officers, key officers who were in charge of public works, education, policing, chief secretary included. All of them. I don't think they were listening to each Obviously, they were not listening to each other. Before I took over, there was no WhatsApp group formed. The technology was there. But nobody had united them. Nobody had brought them together. And the politicians of the day preferred them all to be in silos, not to be united in listening, so that they can all work with them separately. I formed a prosperous Puducherry group, WhatsApp. These are all ideas which emerged, all by internal thinking. Put a nutrition, morning nutrition at 6 a.m. 6 a.m., the morning nutrition went to 230 officers of what is the positive thought of today. Some loved it. Some don't, didn't like it. Some were cynical about it. Some may have deleted it as soon, but many got it by notification. So my first experience to me, proving you what you said, 
getting up in the morning, reading for myself, charging myself, seeking guidance, and then sharing my morning nutrition to charge others. And there was no, it's not cause transactional. It was giving, a sense of giving. Look, I got a good thought. You may also good. Mujhe acha laga, aapka bhi bhala ho. Mera bhala hua, aapka bhi bhala ho. So I, it was like, I've done well. I've felt well. You also be feeling well. You pick it, you pick it, not just your choice. So this is my one example of morning. And after that, uh, rest is history. Because every morning I had a new initiative, which I would take up in my morning 10 a.m. meetings. And I went from one in, and my officers asked me, ma'am, where do you get these ideas? How are you coming up with a new idea? A solution every time. And I said, I don't know. Somebody's speaking to me. I'm being guided. Somebody's holding my hand. And the morning nutrition is my energy and recharge. So I'm proving you, uh, giving you evidence. Oh, that's why I wanted uh, Dr. Raman Kapoor to say, you speak first, because I wanted to learn from you and then test myself. Was I doing, why was I doing what I was doing? And today you've given me that, uh, that uh, reason that what was happening by divinity, by guidance, because I sought guidance that God, I've been given a responsibility. Let me serve as long as I'm there to fulfill the um, trust which has been belied in me when the prime minister called me to say, go and work as Lieutenant Governor Puducherry. And he told me finance because he knew that finance is being lost a lot in Puducherry and people are losing a lot of money because there was rampant corruption. I have evidence I'm not alleging now. I'm not making a complaint. It, he said, he used the word Kirinji. How do I get? But then I, of course, less is that I learned, read the law, read the rules, and I realized I had the right requisite responsibilities to fulfill the tasks which was given. Though others didn't want to accept that the elected governor has these parts. But I read it. Now, second, third, is this is what I was being guided. Read the law, read the rule. And I was even being quoted, guided as if somebody's speaking. This is my morning nutrition. And now it's now history that I begin with the morning nutrition. I read my morning nutrition at night before I sleep, which means I do good reading myself. And then I leave a thought in my draft. And in the morning, I first thing I do is click and send it to everybody, read mine and share with everybody the positive thought. It's one even today. So now second thing I, would, I wanted to share with you, what you said is I, my experience in the prisons. When I took Vipassana meditation to the prisons, how did I get it, get a thought? The thought was, sister, is I used to walk my prison every morning. And when I used to walk the prison, I saw a lot of stress, a lot of anger, a lot of revengeful ideas, a lot of behavior which was, uh, which was cruel in a way and self-destructive. So I was walking the prison with my colleague and I said, and the budget would run, be the uh, prison budget would run out, could not meet tuberculosis, smoking was rampant because they were doing passive smoking. So I asked my colleague, Chalte Chalte, that I do this so much, how do so, you have a chance to clean up, dry cleaning, and you have to clean up. So, you have to clean up. You have to clean up. He must have retired by now, or he must be senior in a man called Raj Kumar. He said, You have to clean up. I said, What is the matter? He said, I have to clean up. 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 I have इन्होंने गुस्से में तो सब क्राइम बर्डर्स किए तो क्या कहां है बोले मैडम जयपुर में है उनका विपशना का सेंटर तो आपको आप उनसे कांटेक्ट करो मैं कहा चल, चलते हैं सो कैन यू बिलीव इट वी रन बैक आई सेड आई हैव फाउंड अ सॉल्यूशन एंड आई कनेक्टेड विद जयपुर टू विपशना सेंटर एंड दे सेड मिस्टर राम सिंह वाज अ रिटायर्ड आईएएस ऑफिसर ही वाज अ विपशना टीचर अंडर गुरु गोविंद का जी एंड ही सेड यस किरण आई विल कम I will come. I said, sir, can you come and visit us and tell us how can we take this program? He says, yes, I will come, but there's one condition. 
condition is that the staff members will do the course first. And it's a 10 day noble silence course, total noble silence. We will have no guns and we will do the whole program inside the prison. I said, oh God, I get all the best words to the criminals and the staff together. He said, yes, you first send some staff here. Let me orient them. And if they like the course, because 10 days of total silence and we were starting with meditation from four in the morning till the last sitting at 10. So you will rest. Is so uh, I sent first an advanced team. Many officers would not have agreed. So it came back and they came back transformed. Meanwhile, I checked with Ram Singh's wife. I said, Ram Singh's wife, what is this Ram Singh? Okay? Is this a bad thing? Yes, ma'am. This is a very bad thing. This is a very bad thing. But the madam, after the course, this is a very bad thing. This is a very bad thing. So I was convinced I was doing the right thing. I was trying. I was experimenting. So I found a solution. And sister, we held our first meeting in Vipassana meditation course. I found a solution. And sister, we held our first Vipassana meditation course. In April of 1993, December, April of 1994, first course of 1,000 prisoners was held together. It's the world's largest in history where a Vachra meditation course has been held inside a prison. And it had no guns. Guru Goenka Ji came himself and we did the course. Now, I didn't sit the course. I saw the course. And I saw amazing change. And then we inaugurated the Vipassana meditation courses. By the way, the Brahm Kumaris actually were the first ones to come into prison for my programs. In uh, Sister, Sister Shukla from Harinagar was the first one who started the Parvachan program and the programs of Brahm Kumaris very soon after my taking over as IG prison. So I knew the power of this uh, Parvachan as satsang, etc. And a lot of people smoking started to go down because of our Brahm Kumaris evening satsangs and evening uh, pravachas. So we were actually incrementally going. So I saw the result. And I said, my God, if 1,000 prisoners could sit without hitting each other and uh, be disciplined and be silent and meditate, then why not uh, go on with it? So we opened a center. And by the way, the center is still running inside the prison as a Vipassana. I saw a dramatic. Now, where was the shift? Shift came. Shift came when they started to self-observe. And that's exactly what you're saying. They started to self-observe and they started to manage themselves better. And there were no riots. And after that, crimes, etc. happened. When I saw the prison settling down, it started to settle healing, as, as doctor wanted. I saw healing taking place. I saw silence coming, cleanliness coming, discipline coming, keenness to read and learn coming, spirit of service coming, etc. Drugs falling out of smoking declining. This settled down in the uh, Indian prison. Now I'm going to give you the experience of police. After I left the prison, I was made in charge of special commission of police training. And I found this station house of the uh, faculty of the police very stressed. police training punishment So in a way telling me also, I punished a special commissioner training. Mary punishment punishment मैंने इतना कुछ जेल वालों के लिए किया अपने अपने डिपार्टमेंट के लिए क्यों नहीं करती तो मैंने उनको समझाया कि लुक मैंने ये काम किया था प्रिजन में और उन लोगों का बड़ा भला हुआ था क्या तुम एक्सपेरिमेंट करना चाहोगे मेरे साथ लेकिन इस बारी मैं भी आपके साथ बैठूंगा क्योंकि अगर मैं नहीं बैठ इफ आई हैव नॉट सैट इनटू द प्रोग्राम दे वुड नॉट हैव कम नाउ सी दीस आर पुलिस ऑफिसर्स दीस आर नॉट प्रिजनर्स हु वुड ओबे ऑर्डर्स और सब और इन्होंने कहा मुझे जब एक बात ये कही कि मैडम जब हम हाथ मिलाते हैं और कहते हैं अच्छा दिल्ली पुलिस में हाथ हाथ मिलाते हैं तो बोलते हैं कहां पोस्टेड है दूसरा साथी बोलता है मैं पुलिस ट्रेनिंग में हूं तो बोलो मेरा हाथ गिर जाता है वो हाथ ही नहीं मिलाते इंस्टेड ऑफ शेकिंग हैंड्स देयर हैंड फॉल्स डाउन मींस और ये तो पुलिस ट्रेनिंग में आज सदा से करते हैं लाओ दिन में दिल में वापस लाते हैं अपनी अपनी लियाकत की पहचान 
So I did a meditation program Vipassana for police officers. For the first time, I did the program. And we had about a thousand, uh, more than 2,000 police officers. And we had a large convention hall. And we did the program. And do you know what happened? After that, course, the Kalia. Then uh, when I was to be going traveling up and down at the airport, then I would come and see a smiling officer saluting me. So I said, to bahut khush ho. You madam, when have you ki hui? See, I'm again giving you evidence where the smile was on their face for those people who done, done this insightful full course. Well, my journey also after doing the self-awareness program can be divided into two parts, my friends. One before the Pashna program and one after. When what I was before and what I was after, what happened was that it increased my qualitative awareness about myself. I start to hear myself more, see myself more, feel myself more, and be where I wanted to be and respond accordingly. So friends, this is what I thought that um, um, this kind of self-policing, I used to call the word self-policing because it is nothing short of self-policing. And I use, and there's a film now, uh, Dr. Raman, there are two films. One is Doing Time, Doing Vipassana. And the second is Self-Policing, You Be the Sky. That's, that was, and then we brought, of course, Brahma Kumaris were always part of our programs. Um, then we brought in the Art of Living program and Sri Sri Ravi Shankar's program. We brought in all possible strategies so that the awareness and spirituality comes. Let me now say um, what Dalai Lama says about health. He says, Dalai Lama, when asked what surprised him most about humanity, he answered, man, because he sacrifices his health in order to make money. Then he sacrifices money to recuperate his health. And then he's so anxious about the future that he does not enjoy the present. The result being that he does not live in the present or the future. He lives as if he's never going to die and then dies having never really lived. Beautiful. Friends, uh, this, I'll end it up with one story I heard the other day. Somebody was walking up and down and walking, he walking 30 minutes of daily walk, cleanses up your mind a lot. And it's a very good way to, to good health, one of the techniques of, one of the tools of good health. He, somebody asked, Kya kar, what are you doing? He said, oh, you're so healthy. He says, yes, I'm the richest because I've got number one health. And then he says, oh, really? I have another car. I have a beautiful new car. I'm now, you see, can you add zero to it? So add another zero. I've got a new house. Oh, now I'm 100, I'm richer. Then you see, you had one health. You had number one. I've got a car, I'm 10. I've got a house, I'm 100. I've got no bank balance, I'm 1,000. I've got married and got a great spouse. I've got 10,000, it went on. Then he told them, he told them, okay, friends, you drop this first one, all of them are zeros. Zero. All of them are zeros. That's what the Lai Lama is, I think, mentioning. So if we remember all this, since we are talking about health, in COVID, nothing else but our own mental well-being and uh, health. And what he now health is holistic. Now, I'm not going to go into all that you share because I don't want to repeat what you said. Health is very holistic. It's emotional. It's physical. It's environmental. It's spiritual. In fact, you're right. The spiritual health is missing. It's called the EQ, the SQ, and the EQ. The emotional quotient, spiritual quotient, and the physical quotient. Or the IQ, which is intelligence quotient. I think what, is, what needs to be re-emphasized is the element of SQ. We are focusing on IQ. We are trying to learn EQ and um, trying to understand and grapple with it. But what we are not at all introducing amongst our younger generations is the SQ. Why should we read the Gita when we are small? Why should we not read the heritage? Sanskrit, why don't we learn Sanskrit? Because if, the more we learn Sanskrit, the more we'll go back to our roots, which is a real source. Of course, if you can't, then no problem. At least read the translations and listen. This to my mind, Dr. Sab, is my contribution this morning for you. Thank you for a wonderful opportunity to me to express something for you, which, had happened in my life, I thought here's an opportunity to share with you, Dr. Sam.
Thank you very much, Kiranji. Thank you, ma'am. This has been a wonderful session today. Thank you, sister. And I would like Sister Shivani to give her a few final words for what she thought about the entire effort of you know having such a session and how because we have been always learning from you. So, what do you feel should be the takeaway message for all our audience? A lot of them are doctors who are watching you today. What should like, be the like Dr. Kiran Bedi shared now that at four four thirty in the a.m. it's as if someone is talking to us. Now, when for those who would have not experienced this before, it's difficult to sometimes comprehend and and they may feel okay. It was her experience. It's not her experience. This can be everyone's experience. This can be everyone's experience. It's not called Brahma Maurat for nothing. There is a reason why those words have been given. There's a reason why everyone was always taught to wake up early because really at that time, this conscious layer of the mind becomes silent. The environment is silent because majority minds are sleeping. It's like, you know, what time would you get the best internet connectivity when the least people are using it? So everybody start, tries to use that time to download the best data. Similarly, you want to download what the divine is teaching you. You want to download what is the right thing for you to do. It's that time. Hours and hours of meetings during the day would not be needed if we just use that half an hour that morning and get that right answer. So what Dr. Kiran Bedi has shared with us, thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing that beautiful experience and how much we can relate with it because when we start experimenting with it, we realize it becomes a normal way of living, you know, so then it's a normal way of living that, okay, and, you know, during the day, we will say to everyone this morning, this is what was the thought. This is the morning. This is what the instruction I got. Even our, the head of the Brahma Kumaris, Dadi Prakashwani, Dadi Janki, you know, they've never been to school. They were never educated in terms of the IQ of what the world would say. But today they have established an organization which is in 140 countries, which has got 20,000 surrendered sisters, millions, only with one thing, that Amrit Vela, four o'clock in the morning, connecting to the divine and doing everything, what message they got at four o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Only that, that is the only thing. The Adis would come in the morning class and say, Aaj Amrit Vela mujhe ye aya. and everybody will just do it like, yes, this has to be correct. And then over a period of time, everyone else also was starting to see that experience. So at the Brahma Kumaris, the 4 to 5 a.m. meditation is like, we won't leave it for anything in the world, for anything. So automatically then we'll sleep early, you know, so then everything goes into this way because you want to wake up. So thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing that. I think it's going to be a big inspiration for everybody because one is to hear theory and one is to get a practical evidence and a practical experience of what we share. Thank you so much for the thank magic you. you create always. Thank you, thank Dr. You. Kiran, again. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Kiran. Just uh, any last words from you, Dr. Kiran? Keep Before up such like program. In fact, uh, keep bringing Sister Shivani back and, sure. and whomever she suggests further. And I think it's a great q &A. It's a rejuvenation and it's actually you giving the real holistic health. This is holistic health. Dr. Sam. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you thank once you. again, thank everybody. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Sister. Sister. Om thank, Shanti, you. Sister. Thank, thank you, Om Shanti. Thank you, Om Shanti. Thank you, Om Shanti. Thank you so much. Om Shanti.